Hello everyone, we're back. I'm Isil. I'm Alice. And today we'll talk about protein. Specifically, a high protein diet and whether it's a good thing. I've personally seen loads of videos on YouTube which say, this is what I eat to get abs and high protein diet for gain and talking about how eating a high protein diet will help you build muscle, specifically muscle hypertrophy and look more muscular and strong. But it's also, there's also a lot of monologue, also a lot of dialogue about how it's just purely like healthier than any other yeah. vegan diets. That's why I asked Alice to look into the evidence behind it um, and she'll tell us in about four categories yeah. what she found. Yeah, so I wanted to see whether this higher protein diet is just another fad diet like all the other ones and I started off by looking at systematic reviews um, through a search engine PubMed and systematic reviews are papers that gather all the available evidence or trials on one topic and talk about what they show. The four main areas that I looked at were, is a higher protein diet healthy for the average person? Is it useful if you're obese and you're trying to lose weight? Is it useful if you're an athlete? And the fourth one is, are there any downsides to eating a higher protein diet? So is there a benefit of eating higher protein versus just eating a balanced diet? And this was one of the areas that interested me the most because I think we've seen in the last five to 10 years a real trend in people wanting to, rather than just maintain a good level of health and fitness, reach above that and go above that Mm -hmm. and kind of achieve expert level of health of health and so these studies all look at markers of um cardio metabolic disease so things that if they're raised will increase your risk of having heart attacks or will increase your risk of having diabetes but so if they found a way of defining health in order to quantify some of their findings yeah um so and they- in research this is an important thing to do. Yeah, you need to be able to measure what you're looking into. But what's interesting is all the super, super healthy YouTubers and other people who were talking about these diets, I wouldn't say any of them are at risk of kind of hypertension or diabetes. So how do we measure what they define health as? Mm. We have to go on the evidence that we have. So the first thing that I looked at was a meta-analysis of 74 different studies in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. They looked at all the trials that had been done that compared normal protein and high protein diets and found that there was um, a very small reduction of in things like blood pressure, BMI, waist circumference in people who were eating a higher protein diet. And it's interesting because this was this um, paper did a statistical analysis on studies that have already been published and what it showed was that the findings of some of those studies where they said high protein will reduce your cholesterol when they did statistical analysis to remove bias and confounding factors and external factors that also affect blood pressure and and triglycerides and cholesterol a lot of those beneficial effects disappeared so it's understandable that we are somewhat fanatical about our health and diets and you know and especially I I don't want to say I don't want to be ageist because it's not only the young people Mm. nowadays it's more the whole populations we are we have an aging population um, individual lifespan or like or on a statistical level people live longer than they were Mm. you know hundreds or even 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 like decades ago, ago. Yeah. Um, so people are a bit obsessed about it because it sounds like it's the only thing that we can control yeah. um, when it comes to our health. Yeah, because um, you can't control your genetics, you can't control what socioeconomic group you're born into, but, and I would say still that has a factor on your diet and what you eat, but there's also quite a bit of shaming these days about if you're not eating the best healthy diet, then you're not being a responsible person mm. and you're not thinking about your health. So there's another study yeah. that looked at um, 
health markers in people on a higher protein mm. diet. So it was a US study, 23,000 people, and it looked at how much protein they were already eating. So this wasn't a randomized control, control trial. It was just a cohort study, and it just grouped people into people who were eating normal protein and people who were eating a higher protein diet. Mm. And the people in the higher protein group did have tiny reductions in some of the risk factors for disease. But because this wasn't a randomised control trial, you can't say that one thing caused the other. You can just say that they're associated. And that's a really important thing that I think if you haven't been trained in statistical statistics and how to look at evidence, you might not appreciate that just because two things go together, it doesn't mean that one caused the, the other. other. Yeah. So the second thing I wanted to talk about is whether eating a higher protein diet would help you lose weight if you're okay. obese. Um, the reason behind people thinking that it might help you lose weight is that protein is has been shown to increase the satiety. So it's supposed to make you feel fuller for longer. Mm. And a very successful, very famous diet, the Atkins diet in the 1970s, was based on a very high protein intake mm. and a lower carb intake. So... The biggest trial I found was a pounds lost trial. Um, it's an acronym, it stands for different things, but it showed, got 800 obese people and separated them into four different groups um, in terms of ones that were eating high protein, high fat, high protein, low fat, high fat, low protein, low protein, low fat, mm -hmm. trying to see which was the best thing to lose weight mm -hmm. um and it followed them up for two years which is good because a lot of the other studies were very short term mm -hmm. and essentially it found that the best diet um is the one that you can stick to okay which makes sense if you're on a calorie restricted diet the best diet is it's not so much in terms of the ratio of macronutrients as long as you're getting enough of what you need mm -hmm. it's what you can actually do that will allow you to stay on that calorie calorie restricted diet so you're eating less than you're expending mm -hmm. yeah um but the problem with that trial was also that no one actually hit the protein requirements no one actually ate and that's the problem with a lot of the trials is that you can tell someone to eat something but they're not compliant but they're not compliant diet's difficult and then the other smaller study i found was an indonesian study um, which were which I liked because a lot of the studies are all on American people or all on quite an, uh, can be on an undiverse group or can just be in Western societies. But an Indonesian study showed no difference in waist circumference. But again, no one stuck to the diet. So the third thing we wanted to talk about was whether a high protein diet affects athletic ability. Yeah. So. Um, First, you need to sort of define what you want in terms of benefiting an athlete. Are you talking about increased performance? Are you talking about increasing muscle mass? Um, or are you talking about maintaining muscle mass as you cut calories? Mm -hmm. So I've looked at a few studies and they're, they're good quality studies. There was one that was um, a short trial of... I mean, it was short, so that's not fantastic. But they essentially got um, normal, healthy men who were recreationally active. So they liked working out. And they said, right, what we're going to do is for four weeks, we're going to put you on either a normal protein diet. Um, it was even it was still quite high protein, actually. It was 1.2 grams per kilogram mm -hmm. or a super high protein diet of 2.4 grams per kilograms, which is like very large amounts of protein and at the same time we're going to train you and we're going to see what effects it had mm -hmm. and it showed that the higher protein 2.4 grams per kilogram group they didn't perform better in any of the tests at mm -hmm. the end of the trial but they did have a leaner physique mm -hmm. so they'd lost um they'd lost body weight but maintained a greater proportion of um muscle to fat Mm -hmm. An important thing to note was, as well as being on this um, diet, they also had their calories restricted. So and they, what does calorie restriction mean? Well, it varies from tri trial to trial. Mm -hmm. But in this trial, they reduced the amount of calories the men were having before they started the experiment by 40%. And how did they know what sort of calorie intake they had before that? 
Did they measure it in real time or was it just a... Yeah, so that's a really good point that most of the trials to do with diet involve people reporting um, what they eat in the average day. And as we know... Everybody lies. Everybody lies. Loads of people eat without realising. You probably report your best day, not your worst day. So that is, there's a lot of limitations when you start looking at nutrition um, and dietetic research. There was one study that was promising in terms of higher protein and performance. So in the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutritionists, they mentioned that if you are doing so much exercise that you know you're training for ultra marathons you're running hundreds and hundreds of kilometers if you cannot meet your calorie requirements with carbs then if you supplement protein then you will perform better than people who don't mm -hmm. so you were an athlete right um i was more of a like enthusiastic sports person uh, but i never competed uh, whereas like in in national or international sports events after the age of 14 <laughs> and before that it doesn't really count in our research um so what was it like when you were training for a tournament well, or a competition so i i wasn't athletic as a child and then became athletic at university and got into rowing in quite a big way because there's no real little way to do mm -hmm. rowing um, and so I was training very hard, three hours a day, and I went to the gym for the first time. I really hadn't done much sport before I started um, rowing, and I saw people drinking protein shakes, mm -hmm. which I thought was something you saw on TV or heard about in movies. I didn't realise that normal people that I went to university with would be taking protein shakes. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to my coach and asked, do I need to be taking protein shakes? Because I was doing weightlifting sessions. And that's when you see them, the people who are sitting, by the way, it's texting with their big protein shake thing, mm -hmm. saying, should I be taking protein shakes after my um, weight sessions? And my coach at the time said, no, but eating um, a snack with some protein in it would be useful. So I went to look at whether eating more protein would increase your muscle mass. Mm hmm and again, I have not managed to find any um, evidence that eating a higher protein diet, eating a higher proportion of protein if you're eating a normal diet. So not a restricted diet. Not a restricted diet. So the amount of calories you need to perform your exercise and your basal metabolic rate, you're matching that. So you're not trying to lose weight. You're trying to maintain weight, but eating higher protein. Couldn't find any evidence that that would increase muscle mass. All the evidence seems to be that if you're cutting your calorie intake um then eating high protein will help you maintain lean body mass mm -hmm. so maintain your muscle and the best study that i found um for that was actually in older people so it seems to be that older people benefit more from this effect um than younger people that was a six year long cohort trial in denmark so what what do they benefit from the high protein diet so and in it, what way so if you eat higher protein and this trial specifically looked at leucine one of the amino acids if you eat higher protein you will have a higher lean body mass so a higher ratio of muscle, muscle over fat over fat this brings us to the fourth thing yeah which is the potential of a high protein diet being detrimental to your health. Yes, so people worry about eating a high protein diet um, because for a while now we have been advising patients with kidney disease, established kidney disease, to eat a lower protein diet. So not average, half that. Um, and that is because eating a lower protein diet has been shown to reduce the speed that the kidney essentially dies and delay dialysis, which mm. is what people want to avoid if they can. Um, and there are several uh, animal studies that have been done to look into this in a bit more detail. So they've been focusing on the kind of kidney disease that's caused by having diabetes. And there were two m studies into mice where they genetically engineered the mice to have diabetic kidneys. And it was showed that the ones that were given a higher protein diet had higher markers of kidney damage than the ones who were on a lower protein diet. Now, the high protein diet they gave these mice was insane. They were getting 60% of their calories 
from protein, which I don't think even the most ardent and enthusiastic fitness YouTuber would manage. Um, but it was interesting because these studies looked at markers for kidney damage that aren't measured routinely. Mm. So the studies in humans have been looking at quite, um, quite gross markers of kidney damage. So EGFR and creatinine, which tend to be quite late markers of things going wrong. Mm -hmm. And these mouse models, they were looking at things that tend to be deranged a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. However, they have done long term cohort studies where they follow up people who eat a higher protein diet and they have not found an association um, in their in having poorer kidney function in that group. These are the people who don't have an existing kidney yeah. problem. So and so I wouldn't recommend someone with a known kidney problem to suddenly eat a high, a high protein, protein diet, diet without talking to their doctor. The next thing is whether eating a higher protein diet increases the acid load um in and which in your blood which affects bone metabolism calcium metabolism and so could eating a higher protein diet cause osteoporosis mm. or worsen osteoporosis um and at the moment there's no convincing evidence that that is the case mm -hmm. and in fact more of these long cohort studies that follow up different people on different diet shows that the higher protein group have actually got better bone health However, again, that's an association. Do they just have better bone health because they do more exercise? They try to remove things like that, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not always possible. So right. to, to me, it doesn't seem like it's dangerous if you're already healthy to eat a higher protein diet. Um, but again, all of these studies had defi different definitions of what high protein actually means. Mm. So if you were to summarise a little bit what you looked into, um, mm. what would you say? Well, I'd start off by saying that if you're a healthy person watching this video who is not a high performance athlete and does not have any pre-existing diseases, um, if you are thinking of eating a higher protein diet to benefit your health, first think about what you define health as. The only evidence that a high protein diet is beneficial overall for health is very small changes in things like blood pressure. Do you want to make such a big change to your diet for a potentially negligible benefit? Now, if you're overweight and you're trying to lose weight, if you enjoy eating a high protein diet and it allows you to cut your calories and maintain that, then go for it but it's not the kind of holy grail answer that will fix um, your issues. It is always going to be difficult to cut down your calories um, in an effort to lose weight. If you're a high performance athlete, you won't be watching this video to get dietary advice. You'll be getting dietary advice from your exactly. team nutritionist. And I think what we need to be careful of is seeing these wonderful athletes and wanting to emulate them, but eating the diet of an amazing athlete like Mo Farah or Serena Williams is not going to give you their body. You need to put in the training as well. If you're cutting your calories or struggling to meet your calorie ne needs on a high, a high intensity training regime, then supplementing protein will probably help. Be selective in your research. Make sure that you seek out um, information that has sustenance to it. Mm. Um, be take everything with a pinch of salt, including this. Yeah. Um, uh, be aware of reporting bias. People report um, success stories and f n not so much failures. Nowadays, YouTube is an amazing space. You, you get everything, but um, it's dangerous. Personal experiences are very important, mm. but um, there is a reason why people spend their whole life studying one single topic yeah um those are the people who will be the experts not us not i'm not going to name anyone if any of you would be interesting interested in seeing a video where i talk about how i look at papers it might be a bit dry talking about statistics but whether you'd be interested in how to start looking at um evidence yourself um then let us know be kind maybe yeah. give us a like yeah subscribe if you want and um, till next time. Deuces. Deuces. <laughs> if we're doing a press up, do I have to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Am I shiny? No.
that's it. That's all I've got. That's all I've got. The question of what exactly health means is, uh, uh, or, you know, what what exactly... Blah, 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 no. blah. Is that, is that how they make limes? <laughs> I'm so uncool. Oh, it's all spinning out. It's control truck. Control?